Hi, thank you so much for clicking on our video. My name is Morgan Hester and I work here at Heritage Christian University in the Office of Admissions. Today I'm going to walk you through how to fill out one of our applications so hopefully you can apply to go to school here. So let's get started. Okay, great. Let's jump into the application process. So the first thing you have to do if you want to apply to Heritage is you have to go to the website in order to get the application. So our website is www.hcu.edu. So if you type that into your search bar, it will bring you to this page right here. And as you can see in the background, we have this beautiful video playing. Um, and on top of that video, we have one of our little slogans, um, Thrive in Your Ministry. And then underneath that, you'll see a couple of key little buttons to click on. Apply now and request information. But for the purpose of this video, we want to know how to apply. So to apply now, you click on either this button or the button located at the top of the screen. Both of those buttons take you to the same place. So let's get ready to apply. So let's click apply now. Now that we have clicked that button, it's taking us to the application page. If you scroll down, you'll see HCU admissions application. This initial application is just the beginning. So the whole application isn't this short, it's a little bit longer. But this is the first part that you can fill out on the website. So let's jump into it. Application. Now for some people, this is the hardest part trying to figure out which of these applications they need to fill out. So I'm gonna give you kind of a rundown on what the applications mean and which ones probably best suit you. So first here we see an audit application. Um, some people don't really want a degree. Some people just wanna take a couple of classes, but they don't want college credit for them. If you're one of those people, um, then you would choose audit application. And that application is a little bit shorter and it asks for less information. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's the one you choose. Here at Heritage, we also offer um, a dual enrollment program where people can get high school credit and college credit at the same time. So if you're in high school um, and you're interested in our program about that, you would click the dual enrollment application. So here you'll see when we get into these two other applications, we have an international application and a US application. So obviously, if you live inside the US, you're a US applicant. And if you live outside of the US, you're an international applicant. So underneath dual enrollment, we see graduate. What is a graduate degree? So a graduate degree is for anyone who has completed their college education with a bachelor's degree. So you have to have at least a bachelor's degree in order to apply for the graduate program. So if you have less than a bachelor's degree, then you would need to fill out the undergraduate application. So undergraduate um, applicants are people who have graduated high school or have obtained their GED and have not yet obtained a bachelor's degree. All of those people would fill out an undergraduate application. So today we're gonna fill out an undergraduate application as our little tester. Um, there's some slight differences between the graduate and undergraduate, but they are roughly the same. So for today's purpose of this video, we're just gonna fill out the undergraduate app. So here we go, let's just jump in. Okay, now that we've chosen the correct application, let's fill out the rest of the information. So here we have our name, our email, make sure that's correct so that we can email you the rest of the application. Your phone number. Here we have the entrance term, which basically means which term would you like to start your education in? So if it's the spring or the summer or the fall, Choose the correct one. And then enrollment. Is it full time? Is it half time? Is it less than half time? Does that mean you're just going to take a few classes? You're going to take full load? You're going to take a half load? Um, and for a full explanation about those, contact our Office of Admissions um, and we can answer all of those questions for you. All of our information will be listed at the beginning of this video and at the end. So once you've done that, you click the submit button. It loads, and then once it's submitted, it will say, thank you for starting your application. Once you input all that information, it's gonna send you an email, and that email is gonna contain the link to the rest of the application. So next, we click on our email and look for that application email. Okay, 
So now we've clicked on our email and we see, ah, I have an email from Heritage, your application with Heritage Christian University. So you wanna click on that email and here it gives you some information about what to do. Once you've read all that information, you click this link and it takes you to the application. So here we have our undergraduate US application. At the top, it's gonna to ask you to verify your email address. It's also going to get you to add your phone number so that you can receive text updates and notifications about your um, application. And then if you have any further questions, you can click this button and you'll be allowed to submit any questions you have about the application. Someone will in our office will read those questions and then they'll get back to you. So here we go. Let's get started. Okay. Here we have the undergraduate program. Um, so you're supposed to select um, which program you're applying for. So here you'll see there's a long list of different programs that we offer. There's a lot of specific information about the differences between these different programs. Um, and if you'd like specific information about those different programs, um, please contact our office, um, go up to the top, click that little question button, and we would be happy to explain all those to you. Um, it's kind of a lot to go into um, for the purpose of this video, um, but we would love to explain all that to you um, in an email or over the phone. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and click Bachelor of Arts Distance Learning. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the next section. Like I said, a lot of questions about that one specific blank um, that we would love to discuss with you. Second is the delivery method. So here, basically you decide how do you wanna consume all this information and in education? Um, would you rather do it on campus, physically sitting in the classroom, or would you like to do it online? The awesome thing about Heritage is that all of our courses are offered on campus and online. So a lot of degree programs don't offer that, don't offer all classes on campus and all distance learning, but we do here at Heritage. So you get the opportunity to choose what you wanna do. So I'll click online. And then housing. Do you plan to live on campus? Yes or no? Pretty simple. But the rest of this information is just your generic personal information. Mailing address, phone number, gender, date of birth, marital status. That's for statistical purposes. Um, social security number, your citizenship, ethnicity, and then we get down to a really important part of our application, the personal statement. So you might wonder, why do you want a personal statement? Well, our university wants to get to know you and they want to know why you would be a good applicant for the programs that we offer here at Heritage. Um, in this description, you'll see um, this, your personal statement is a chance for you to share why you're a good fit for the program. It also tells us your intellectual and creative skills and what you've achieved so far in your life. But it's not just about those things. It's also telling us about your personality, um, what experiences and goals um, you've either gone through or you are planning to work towards. We wanna know a little bit about you and why you wanna pursue a Bible degree. I think the last three sentences are pretty much the best way to describe what this personal statement should be. They say, be reflective, be open, be honest. Let us know who you are and why you should come to Heritage. But we need you to do it in a little bit more than 250 words. So before you start filling out your application, you may wanna think about what you would wanna talk about in a personal statement, because it's very important. And we do read every single one of them. All right, the next section we have is academic history. So this asks, what is the highest level of education that you have completed? So you go through this list and you just answer that question. If you've completed high school, you have a diploma. If you've taken some college classes, that would be some college. If you've got an associate or a bachelor's degree, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you go through and you click some of that. So I'll click some college. Um, and then this next section is super important, okay? So pay attention to this section. This is about all the schools that you have attended so far. So for our records and for us to get your transcripts, we need to know what schools you have attended. 
Um, we need all secondary and post-secondary schools. So what does that mean? A secondary institution um, is like a high school. And then a post-secondary institution is anything after that. So that's like a college, a university, a technical school, a preacher training school, um, the list could go on. But we need all of the information um, about which of those institutions you have attended. Not only that, but we also need the years that you attended those institutions. So our example here is Lauderdale County High School, 2006 to 2010, University of North Alabama, 2011 to 2012. That's a perfect example of how to list these schools. Um, we just ask that you put every school that you've attended so far. Um, that's important for us so that we know how many schools you've attended. Also, if you've taken some college classes, there's potential that you could get some transfer credit from the past college courses that you've already taken. Um, and if you don't list that on, um, on this section of the application, then we're not gonna be able to help you get any credit for that. So please be sure to fill out all of that information. The next section here is the college readiness exam. So I'm gonna go into um, this, these types of exams for undergraduate and for graduate. So the undergraduate, in order um, to apply to our university, you need to have taken either your ACT or your SAT. Um, there are some slight differences between those two tests. Um, but we take both of them. In order for you to be accepted here, you have to have a minimum composite score of 18 on the ACT and a minimum score of 900 on the SAT. Um, so those that's in our catalog here, that's what we require. Um, if you are over the age of 31 years old, um, then you can technically be exempt from having to take this course. Um, but we really suggest that you take it um, because it's really helpful to see um, where you're at um, before you start college. So that's what we need for the undergraduate section. For the graduate application, um, we'll need your scores from either the GRE or the MAT. So there's some differences in those as well, but we take both of those. Um, and for the graduate, application or the graduate program, there's not a minimum score that we require because we look at the whole individual, um, basically what the whole individual has to offer. So it's not just based off of a number score. Um, it's based off of a lot of different things, especially your personal statement and your references, um, as well as that um, exam score. So there, like I said, there's not a minimum for the graduate exam, but we're not just looking at that score. We're looking at who you are as a person. So that's that section about college readiness exams. Okay, the next section is transcript submission. So this is important. Remember we listed all of the secondary and post-secondary institutions that we've attended, all the schools that we've attended, we did that earlier. This is where we require all the official transcripts from each of the secondary and post-secondary institutions that you've attended. The difference between an official transcript and an unofficial transcript is the fact that an official transcript has to go from institution to institution. So that means that it goes from one college to another or one high school to a college. And there's no one in the middle that intercepts that. So that means if your transcript comes to you first and then you send it to us, that's not official. You have to contact the school and the school has to send it back to us in order for it to be considered official. We need all of all of your transcripts from all the other schools that you've ever attended. We need that for our records purposes, but we also get those transcripts so that we can potentially get you some transfer credit towards your degree. So if we don't have your transcripts, then there's no way that you can get credit for some of those college classes you may have already taken. Um, so if you've taken um, college algebra before, there's a potential that it can transfer and then you won't have to take it again here. So that's really exciting. We really don't want you to have to repeat any work that you've already done. Um, and so in order for us to see if that could even be possible, we have to have all of your transcripts, very important. So this little transcript submission acknowledgement basically says that I um, 
completely allow Heritage to get those transcripts on my behalf. Um, also, it says if the university is unable to acquire those transcripts that you will do that for us on our behalf. So once you sign there, you're good to go. Also, here's some more really good information just in case you need it. Now let's look at the federal student aid section or the financial aid section. Basically, this little area discusses what kind of aid you could potentially receive as a student and what you may or may not do in order to get that. So let's look at the first one, federal grants and federal loans. Do you plan to file the free application for federal students aid or the FAFSA? Basically, the FAFSA is what you have to fill out in order to apply for Pell Grants or for subsidized loans or for unsubsidized loans. So if as an undergraduate student, you're planning to do that, then you would need to click, yes, I do plan on filling that out. If you are a graduate student and you're planning on um, applying for unsubsidized loans or the Graduate Plus loan, then you would also need to fill out the FAFSA. Once you fill out that, um, or once you click yes, filling out this section on the application, um, our director of financial aid will contact you with all of that information. So all you need to do is just click yes. Veteran Military Education Benefit, or the VA benefit. Most people who are eligible for a VA benefit know that they are. Um, but if you happen to question that, or if you're not sure what the qualifications are for that, um, please contact our Office of Financial Aid here um, at the university. We will have all that information listed at the end of the video. Um, and as always, you can go to our website and find all the contact information. Um, but that is a really good question to ask our financial aid director who can give you all of the details about that. Here's the last little section in the, uh, the federal student aid or the financial aid section. And that is, you need to provide um, the contact information for two relatives that live outside of your home. You're probably wondering, why do I have to do that? Well, the Department of Education has certain regulations for colleges and universities. And so in order for us to meet those regulations, we have to ask this question. So that's what they ask of us. So that's what we ask of you. Next, we have the personal references section. So this is a very unique section um, because you get the opportunity to give us three personal references that are able to talk about you and how awesome you are. <laughs> so before you list these personal references, I would do this. This is kind of our hot tip section. Um, my advice would be to figure out three people um, that would be able to give a reference for you, contact those people and get all of their information first before you even start the application. So you'll need um, like their name and their phone number and their email address. And if you do that before you start your application, then you'll have it and be ready to go. So once you have all that information, you will list, you will list their names and information in this blank here. And then you will input them individually into these three sections. So what happens after you put their information in? Well, once you officially submit your application, those three people get an email notification about filling out a personal reference form about you. You don't get access to it. You don't know what they say, what they'll say about you, but we will. And their responses really help us to decide whether or not we can accept you to our university. So it's a pretty important section. <laughs> the next section we have here is background check. So here at our university, we run background checks on all of our, um, all of our students, all of our US applicant students. And that's just there to protect the people who are on campus and the people who are associated with our school. Um, we just want to make sure that everyone is as safe as possible. So um, here in this section, you'll put if you have ever been suspended or expelled from a university, if you have any criminal history, and then at the bottom is where you give us the um, consent or 
you give us um, permission to do a background check on you. So you would click, I authorize this background check. Um, and if you're underage, if you're, then you would need to fill out the consent form and your guardian would need to fill that out for you. Okay, all that's left is the statement of agreement section of the application. This little agreement basically says that everything you put on your application is complete and is factually accurate and is honest. So you agree that everything you've told us is truthful. And once you sign that, I agree with this statement, then you submit your application and it's all done. That's it, that's all you have to do. So after that, there's a whole process of obtaining transcripts and running background checks and all that stuff. But the initial process is over. You've submitted an application, yay, we've done it. So that's it. That's how you fill out an application to come to Heritage Christian University. If you have any additional questions, which I'm sure that you do, please reach out to us and contact us with those. I'm gonna include all of our information in the next slide. We hope that you'll use that so that you can keep in touch with us. If you're someone who wants to thrive in your ministry, we wanna help you do that because that's our mission at Heritage. Thank you for joining us again. And I hope that you have an awesome day. Can't wait to look at your application soon. Bye.